In this video, I'll be talking about something that I haven't heard covered too often, but uh, I think it's important. I genuinely do. <clears throat> Namely, uh, male friendship, its importance, and uh, the relationship of male friendship to the female, specifically the romance-seeking uh, female interloper, as it were. Well, there are a couple of things I want to cover. The first thing I want to cover is sort of a broad, rough definition of what constitutes male friendship. And I like to think, in my experience, well, first off, let me say off the record, uh, off the record, my closest people, the close people in my life are my male friends. I dare say they have certainly done more for me than in terms of when I was, you know, down the dumps or going through some rough patches uh, than any female ever, uh, likely including my mother. So, and I think that is the defining characteristic of male friendship, the fact that we men value, value each other uh, for our personhood. And I think in general, uh, excluding you know, a professional setting where you need to have a skill set, uh, most males I know, my closest friends, value you, the, your fellow, the fellow man, as a, as a person and, and, and attribute value and worth to you as a person, as opposed to what you can do for that guy. Um, and I think it's a very important thing, male friendship. Now, a lot of people are reluctant to talk about it because, you know, they don't want to be seen. They, you know, I'll, I'm sure I'll get a name called here, you know, I'm, I'm gay or I'm a faggot or something like that. I'm not talking about anything beyond uh, male, uh, well, brotherly love, as it were. And it's an important thing to have in life. And um, women are an incredibly destructive force on that, uh, on that brotherhood, on that friendship. And there are many ways they do it, but you know, let's go just go through some examples to begin with. Uh, and you know, you all you all know the story uh, in relationships or in marriage or what have you that the uh, of the jealous wife. I'll take my previous exam, my previous uh, relationship, my most recent past relationship once again as an example. Needless to say, for some measure of time, it was long distance, and I was living in London. She was living in New York. And um, I ha finally had the opportunity when I was this last year, last Christmas, holiday time, to visit, to see a friend of mine I hadn't seen, must have been over eight years. And a uh, very good friend of mine, he got me out of a big mess one time, and good guy. And I've, I've known him for over 10 years. And so I said, you know, I discussed it with, with my then girlfriend that, be okay if he crashes at her place for a couple of nights and she seemed fine with it. Uh, you know, fast forward, uh, you know, he left the house at some point in time and uh, I was getting the silent treatment for almost a day and a lot of angry looks. Did I know what happened? No. I had to ask. Obviously, it was based on jealousy, I suppose, of some manner or sort, but. Um, yeah, she told me that he, she didn't, she hadn't wanted him to stay that long, and what have you. I said, well, "You sanctioned it. You said it was okay. How can I say no to a guy? My friend happens to have no family, and he has a terminal, not a terminal, but a chronic, sorry, a chronic illness, which well might be terminal. How can I say no to someone like that? So you know, she had some sort of guilt trip thing going on for herself. Who knows? And I was giving the silent treatment and lots of angry looks and all sorts of things for the rest of the day, and it persisted." essentially for the rest of the holiday. This is a minor example, mind you. Um, another example, uh, I have a friend, a good friend, who has a friend that is pretty much a mangina, and I have nothing but contempt for this friend of my friend. Every time, he, first off, he's, he's going into his second marriage. He's a fucking idiot, but that's not the point. <laughs> his first marriage ended in divorce. He's lucky to get away with most of his assets. Well, see if it works a second time. Every time he enters into a new relationship, he starts canceling things. They want to hang out. He starts canceling. And, yeah, this is minor stuff as well. But the point I'm stressing here is that uh, females, because of their meglom uh, meglomania, essentially, and females are megalomaniacs at the end of the day. There's no doubt about it. Not everyone, but the vast majority of them. Um, so, so hopefully no, no women will come on here and say, giving me a... Uh, not all women are megalomaniacs or something like that. But you see the pattern here. 
um, that the female demands absolute and total attention directed towards her to the exclusion of everything else. If a man uh, values his friendship with another man, she finds that a complete threat. Right? Why is it a complete threat? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons why. For one, um, male friendship tends to be much more ground, uh, certainly it's a thousand times more grounded and, and uh, solidified than uh, in case of long-term genuine friendship than any, any relationship a man could possibly have with a woman. Um, and also I believe that male friendship is more genuine based on my observations than the vast majority of female friendships. Remember, the female only knows to uh, associate with people, including other women, for whatever reason, I, I, which, which I, might, I won't surmise here, uh, based on the desire to exploit the person or for, for all sorts of reasons. I mean, you know, the idea of being able to uh, make use of someone else's resources, it, it, there are subtle ways. I mean, some women, for example, have friends because they feel that they're physically are more attractive to their female friends. It makes them feel better. So they keep them around as trophies and all sorts of odd, twisted, psycho and psychotic stuff. Having said that, yes, so the female, of course, feels this in a, in a relationship, in particular, feels this an intense threat, because the female must control the man. Once again, this is the term of manipulation. The female must manipulate the man at all costs. Um, a, a true male friend who, uh, who is valued by the, by the, the pussy slave, as it were, um, is a threat to that uh, monopoly of power and influence, to be honest. Um, but unfortunately, and this is what I really wanted to talk about, the, uh, the sad reality is very often, and Barbara Russell has talked about this phenomenon on numerous occasions, maybe in different terms, but this idea of male-on-male -male competition. Um, or in this case, that <laughs> because of our addiction to women, uh, we, we will, I have seen it happen, forfeit long-term important uh, male friendships for the sake of pussy. And it's, it's a sad thing, because we all know how those relationships go, and what do you lose at the end of the day. Um, and, and we've all felt the pressure, I think. It wasn't the first relationship I had been in where I was given shit for, well, being interested in, in, in hanging out with my friend and uh, catching up and things like that. Um, well, there was also another incident about with her way back, I mean, earlier in the stage. And she, she gave me, she was angry and gave me the silent treatment because... We were sitting at a table in a restaurant, and I, I wasn't talking about directly about the relationship. Rather, I was talking about a good friend of mine who works in the Rhode Island budget office, which I imagine she, she found boring, but you know, who knows. So they see this as a threat. They see it as uh, a threat to their ability to manipulate and ability to control. It's very clear. Um, and unfortunately, most men cave in, in my experience. You have flat-out manginas who will just automatically cave in. I mean, they're, they're so brainwashed and so driven by their libidos that they can't even recognize what they're doing. And I have nothing but the utter contempt for such men. Uh, like this friend of my friend. I don't even know why he remains friends with them, but that's neither here nor there. And you have ones who are kind of on the cusp, I mean, who will feel torn. I think in, in, previous, in previous lifetimes, that's how I felt. That Sometimes when I, you know, you have this sort of almost moral debate, you know, you know, I promised my friend I hang out with him, or I hadn't seen him in a while. But you know, my my quote unquote woman wants me to do X, Y, Z, and you feel torn. More often than not, particularly with the path of marriage, you see male friendships disintegrate because the wife demands and usurps and must have all the attention, all the control, and has to have her husband um, underneath her stiletto iron iron heel, as it were. And I've seen this happen all the time. Um, and it goes to the point, really, where the friendship literally disintegrates because it's a lack of attention paid to the friendship. And in some cases, just flat out. You know, I had another friend who was wanted to visit a, an older friend of his, uh, an old friend of his, and he had recently gotten hitched, the, this other friend who I don't really know very well. And the wife said, no, he can't stay here for a couple of days, your friend, because, uh, you know, it would be a, a violation of her privacy. You know, it's three or four days just to catch up. So, and of course, the, the friend, the husband caved in, and uh, I don't think he's been talking to that friend very much anymore. So, 
it is extremely uh, dangerous um, in terms of manipulation, but also in terms of what Bob Russell has directly talked about, the sort of male-on-male competition. You know, when, when we men are, are literally tearing each other apart in all manner of ways, and psychologically, physically, otherwise, uh, for the sake of a vagina. And I think if you actually listen to yourself say that out loud, it sounds pretty silly. But th- this is... I mean, I don't want to necessarily attribute malice to every woman, but I think some many women take a perverse pleasure out of watching two men, particularly good friends, tear each other apart in order to get access to her vagina. And uh, this is something that really needs to be stressed more than anything else, that, that men, we men, need to pre- present a united front on, on all men's related issues. Um, we need to not yield to such temptations, particularly temptations of women. We also need to, as Barbarossa said once, never mention race, because I think race is irrelevant. We're all men, Latino, black, Asian, white, whatever. And we, we just need to look at this from the perspective of men, because all men are in the same boat. We're biologically all in the same boat, and it is a caste system, essentially, and we're, we're all part of the caste system. And most of us are so-called beta males, whatever that means. And so friendship, male friendship, is one of the cornerstones of any healthy male's life, in my opinion. Uh, I know I would be vastly, vastly poor as a human being without my, my close friends, my close male friends. And uh, I, I, in one case, I might thinking might not even be alive, uh, which I won't talk about now, but a uh, friend really saved my ass back then. So, uh, you know... This is something important to think about. Think about just how valuable your male friends are, and think about the fact that your male friends actually, in the vast majority of cases, I would assume, I don't know all your male friends, they probably value for who you are, not what you can do for them. You know, How many of your male friends are always asking, gimme, 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 gimme? Um, you see, the, the pussy addiction is, is, is so destructive of, on so many levels. Um, it destroys really important social relationships like male friendship, and um, it destroys the, the men the men who are actually involved. And in particular, if you're a man who's decided to uh, kick a friendship for the sake of access to a vagina, and the, the vaginal journey goes south, as it inevitably will, you know, ask yourself what you have left. So I think it should be clear to everyone, uh, every male, that... Um, Particularly in this day and age, uh, when your woman is demanding, if you have one, you you to prioritize her over your friends and to even neglect your friendships, I would say give her the boot, tell her fuck you, or just end the relationship, or do all three of those. Um, Because at the end of the day, uh, the woman doesn't give a shit about you, and your male friend most likely will. And remember, it's your male friends who actually care about your personhood. A woman just give, just cares about how much money you're willing to spend for how much you can earn and what you can get her. Um, or maybe all sorts of other superficial things like, you know, maybe you can give her a good massage or what have you. Who knows? I know my my ex, her thing was eating out in fancy, fancy and quality restaurants. That was her big shtick. That's what she liked having me do for her. So, um, yeah. I wanted to say, mention this because I think it's, it is a very important issue and it, 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 it's a dynamic that you see over and over and over again. The destruction of male uh, friendship, A, because males tear each other apart in, in the quest for vagina, and B, um, because, well, men who are already hitched or in a relationship fear lose a- losing access to the vagina or reprimand or both or stress or all those things on the part of the woman if he actually decides to pay attention and maintain his, his male friendships. And, uh, you know, we all know what happens there. Um, any, and, of course, men who just readily surrender uh, to their women. You know, I, I've actually, in numerous cases, put up a fight. And it was a fight with, with, with excess on these grounds. And uh, it, it's always stressful. And the reason being, as I said, is that if you do not yield to their manipulative power, if you do not make them, quote, unquote, number one, they are very resentful and angry. And this is the depraved and exorbitant and exaggerated and in just incredible self, a sense of self-entitlement that women garner themselves with. And uh, I believe some of them actually believe that. I, they actually believe they are entitled to these things. 
it's not just them projecting um, or trying to convince themselves. They, they really believe this stuff. And um, the only way to combat that is, uh, you know, when I, where I grew up, I grew up in New York City, <laughs> and I'm sure you all heard this. Remember bros before hoes? You know what, man? People used to say that all the time. And growing up and, and, and seeing, watching the world around me, uh, <laughs> I didn't see too many men actually practicing that, to be honest. But you know what? I think we are aware now. We're very aware of the issues. We know that the, the odds are stacked against us. And we need to work in unison. We need to work in brotherhood. So I'm saying here, and I'd, I'd ask everyone else who's watching this, in your life, to, to, to live up to that that statement, bros before hoes, because it is your bros who are going to actually look after you if you're, in, if you're in deep trouble. They're the ones who actually give a shit about your personhood, and the hoes, the hoes don't give a fucking rat's ass about you, and they never will. And that's something you always need to bear in mind, just like you need to bear in mind that you should never trust them. So my motto is, or has been for several years now, and now even all the, all the firmer, bros before hoes for life. Take care and thanks for watching.